After Thomas, Sierra, and I finished hiking the amazing Lost Creek, Andrew was able to make it into town. We had a bigger adventure in store, but before that, we had a bit of time for a smaller excursion. So, we decided to head to Rocky Mountain National Park and find out how much we could see in just a day. Rocky Mountain National Park. <laughs> Today we're going to be starting on the left side of the park at a place called Bear Lake. It's probably one of the most popular trails there, so we're trying to get there a little early, beat a little bit of the crowds, and uh, go up as high as we can before the snow makes us turn around. So out in the distance over there, you'll see this big white building with red roofs. That's the Stanley Hotel, and that's where Stephen King stayed when he wrote The Shining. It's supposed to be incredibly haunted, and I've been inside a couple times, it's really nice. But if you've ever seen the movie The Shining, the exterior is not that. The exterior is actually in Oregon at the Timberline Lodge. The opening shot with the car driving and everything, that's actually in Glacier National Park that's going to the Sun Road. But the inside is based on the Stanley Hotel, and the story itself does kind of like take place loosely in the Stanley Hotel. I forgot my sunglasses, but luckily Thomas has the dictator sunglasses. <laughs> So you just came back from New York, right? Yeah, man, existence is such a varied experience. <laughs> it was actually kind of cool while I was there, which was nice, but it's just like humid and grimy and dark. And here it's like big and open and sunny, fresh air. <sighs> Okay, first stop is Bear Lake. We got to take a quick shuttle to get there. Doesn't look too crowded. How you feel? I'm excited. So to give you some context, we're at the park and ride here. We're gonna take the shuttle all the way to the end where Bear Lake is. A lot of folks will also head up to Dream Lake or Emerald Lake, which is deeper into the mountains. I'd like to go to Lake uh, Hayaha but uh, I don't know if we're gonna have the equipment that we need. But you can see, just look at all the lakes that are around here. This is a, this is a range here, so every canyon here is gonna have its own lake in a way. It's cozy. <laughs> Okay, so which is the first one that we're gonna get to? So we're gonna pass by Nymph Lake and uh, then we'll be hitting Dream Lake. If we wanted to, we could go a little higher to Emerald Lake. I think we're gonna skip that and try and do Lake Hayaha. Okay. I've only been here once. They say that there's still some snow up there, but it might be pretty navigable. So I think I'm mostly adjusted to the altitude at this point, but Andrew, are you struggling at all? It's not bad at all right now, but I can definitely tell I'm like <laughs> struggling more than I would be on a trail like this. My calves are already like burning. <laughs> Andrew loves to show off those calves. <laughs> <laughs> So we're barely even on the trail right now, and this is Nymph Lake. It's so interesting to me because a month ago, this whole thing was completely frozen and still covered in snow. And now it looks so lush and green and vibrant, like it's always like this. Something about Rocky Mountain National Park and just Colorado in general, any site worth seeing that's within a mile or two of a trailhead, it's gonna be very busy. And we can kind of see that there's a lot of folks here. The next lake we're gonna to go to is probably gonna be pretty busy too, but if you can go a little further beyond that, then you'll be a little bit more isolated. There's some sort of wild violet here. It's a little white violet. And these are edible, but I won't eat them. <laughs> I like it. 
like, this is great. I bet that would be some tasty water. <laughs> Are is we this going flowing out of Dream Lake? Yeah, it is. Look at that just like sheer rock face. Bunch of snow. Oh. Ooh, it's good snowballs oh, yeah. here. Want to get Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> so in a minute, I think we're going to come back here. We're going to try and do Lake Hayaha. Okay. Depending on how much uh, snow there is, you can already see it's kind of blocked away. But Dream Lake is this way. Okay. Let's go. Look at the sign here. It feels like Zelda where like the, you know, the gloom has fallen on stuff. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. like <laughs> just a plot of snow covering everything. Yeah. It's funny because I've been in New York City the past week. And so you still have that like surreal sense of scale where something's just unfathomably big, but this is so open <laughs> and beautiful. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna skip Emerald Lake because it's like 0.7 miles up and we're gonna go back down and then a couple miles up to Hayaha. Our trails go. This is not bad at all, but I can definitely tell that I'm getting more winded than I would. It's weird because it feels like an easy hike, but you're just more winded than you are used to. I've been here for about half a week now, and I definitely feel way better than I did when I first got here. When I first got here, it was a struggle. This is very beautiful. And these paths are nice and uh, accessible for lots of people. You can get the experience without too much difficulty. Okay, we're at 10,095 feet elevation. This is higher than Mount Baldy right now from where we were wow. a year ago. Wow. Okay, I feel less bad. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things like this are very deceptive because you start so high up. Yeah. Like we drove so high up already. We haven't really changed that much elevation. Woo wee! Wow. I love these parts of the trail. <laughs> so, wow. there's Nymph Lake down there. That's the one with the first one we passed by? That's the first one we passed by right wow. down there. Yeah, and then that's Bear, Bear Lake to the left. Wow. That is, it's been a mile since I've seen a view like this. <laughs> that is the quintessential Western mountain view. So the plan this weekend is to summit Long's Peak, but we're really concerned about kind of the conditions of the snow on the backside of the mountain. If you've seen our Mount Whitney video, you know that we had to go over the ridge and then hike behind the summit to get to the top of the summit. And the same thing for Long's Peak. Out there, you've got a flat top, which we're trying to get to, but we've got all the snow that we've got to navigate around. So folks who are summiting are saying that we need crampons, uh, helmet, and ice axe. And uh, we're not quite sure if we want to go through the effort of all of that just yet but it's good to actually see it in person so that you can make that call. So we've seen varieties of this plant in lots of places that we've been, from the Midwest even to Hawaii. But this is a type of elder flower or elder plant. And you can see it's got these nice clumps of flowers. And those are actually edible. You could cook them up. A lot of people like to fry them like fritters and eat them. And then later on, those will become berries that you can also eat. So one of the giveaways is it has this classic compound leaf look where it's got these little leaflets branching off of a, sim uh, a single stalk. So lots of elders have that same look to it. This isn't Lake Hayaha yet, but this is kind of one of the offshoots of it. 
Last year I came here with a friend. We came here and it looked like blue milk, just like milky blue. It was so unique and it was caused by a rock slide up the mountain here. But still got a little bit of that blueiness, but it looks more or less like water today. It's probably a trick of the eye, but these ranges look much more tangible now, all of a sudden. You know, I don't think it is. I feel like you just make a lot of progress really quickly yeah. in mountains. It's a lot more like Skyrim than I realized. <laughs> So we've hiked about 1.83 miles and already the crowds are pretty much gone. Wow. Check out the color of this lake. It's like glacier blue Gatorade. Yeah, this is, this is very no, green. this is a Baja Blast. Baja Blast. <laughs> is that get backable though? Good question. <laughs> I'll look on the way back. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe. the very first Bear Grylls videos that we saw was him parachuting into a lake just like this. Oh, yeah. And then he goes up the mountain and like scurry runs down. This environment is exactly what inspired me to get outdoors. I've definitely grown an appreciation for all sorts of landscapes, but it is really, really great every so often to come back to this classic snow-capped mountain landscape. Yeah. One of the things that stands out to me is the amount of boulders that are here. And just these mountains just get thrown up into the air and all these rocks just boulder on down. And in fact, the canyon over there, that's called Chaos Canyon. So that was named after John Chaos? John Chaos, yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for a little breakfast. A little sad boy breakfast. A little chocolate chunk granola. This hits the spot though. <laughs> Lying in the sun like a like a molting lizard. <laughs> Man, that does oh, look really nice. Splayed out. <laughs> you should try it. I'm going to. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thomas is in such a hurry. <laughs> the funniest part is Thomas literally just said we have all day. <laughs> This is the point of coming to places like this. <laughs> you can come back, it's never too late. <laughs> no, I like being on my own island over here. There's less jackasses. <laughs> yeah, there's one jackass instead of two. <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna take a different route back through Glacier Gorge. I think we're gonna see some uh, waterfalls or something. This is what Katahdin was like the whole way. Yeah, pretty much. Glacier Gorge, 3.8 miles. That was basically two that we've done so far. So there should be no sweat. I guess the uh, next stop is Lock Mills Junction, 1.7. It's all downhill too. That's kind of a nice thing about the shuttles is that you can kind of just go wherever you want 
and know you can always get back to your car fairly easily. So Andrew, do you notice any flora or fauna? We've been going through an area full of conifers and these ones uh, being spruce trees. You can eat these little tender tips that are growing on them like uh, right here actually. Usually these little tender growths are edible just to put in your mouth, but you can also make tea out of these needles. Is it just like a vegetable? <laughs> yeah, basically. And then most of this ground cover is just a bunch of blueberries. So I imagine this is an area highly traversed by uh, bears before and after hibernation. Well, before. This is a good example of how mushrooms can be really confusing. Cause right now from this view, it's got this just little ball shape. So it kind of looks like a puff ball, but there's also a lot of deadly poisonous mushrooms that are white. And before they sprout into the full mushroom shape, sometimes they also look like this puffball shape. So when you see this, sometimes the best way to tell is to open it up and cut it in half. And if you can see the beginnings of a stem and gills and a cap within that ball, then you know it's probably something poisonous or something that's inedible. Whereas if it's a puffball, it should just be a flat white surface all the way through. Here we've got some white wildflowers growing called white marsh marigold. And you can see how they're growing in this wetter, marshier environment. And actually over here is something that kind of looks like a, a bellwort of some sort. It resembles a lot of plants I've seen in the east, like perfoliate bellwort or false Solomon seal. So I'm guessing it's somewhat related. So to the naked eye, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a mix of spruce trees and fir trees in this area. The bark of the fir tree looks smoother in appearance, but sometimes you get these little bubbles on them, which contain a bit of resin. Uh, and the sap is really good for starting fires, uh, but it's also a medicinal thing where, yeah, if you have a wound, you can put that on top and it's almost like a wild version of like neosporin. This is a beautiful sight. <laughs> Man, it'd be fun to camp out here. <laughs> Looks like the perfect swimming lake. Yeah. Let's see all the way to the bottom. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's not on the map. So I wonder if this is like a, what, what do you call it? A vernal? Yeah, something like that. You know, something, because there's been so much snow, maybe this is just kind of where the runoff is. Oh, there's one on all trails. It's just not named. No name lake. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been to a place in Colorado yet that has missed. Every single place is amazing. Andrew, you've been to Colorado before? Yeah, and I've been to environments like this, but when I was in Colorado, we explored more of the Southwest part, mm. so the more deserty stuff. So we went to Great Sand Dunes and Mesa Verde. So this is definitely new. A quarter of a mile that way, you get a good view, but. It's my glacier. Andrew's glacier. <laughs> <laughs> What do you see? There's a little stream up on the mountain there. I love big open rocky places like this. I think just in that like adventure mindset, it feels like a safe spot to hunker down and rest, even if we're not actually doing that right now. One other cool thing about this environment, we're so used to sandstone in the east, but this is granite, right? Solid granite. Hey, you can't take this for granted. You can 
actually see some of the blueberry flowers blooming over here. Got a nice red tinge. Sometimes they're just white, but eventually those will turn into nice blueberries. So the full flower will turn into a blueberry or the flower like has a blueberry that comes out of it? Yeah, it has a little like ovary type thing that gets fertilized and then that swells into the fruit and the petals will fall off. Oh. Yeah. I think the uh, remnants of the petal become that, you know, little crown on the berry. Oh. Yeah, so I think that gorge we were hiking next to is Glacier Gorge. Up next is Alberta Falls. You can definitely hear the falls in the distance, and I see a gorge right ahead. As soon as you walk away, just maybe like 30 feet, immediately the sound gets so much less. It's like deafening right next to those waterfalls. Okay, so today we have hiked three hours and 43 minutes, 5.05 miles. And that I think was like a really good start. Yeah, this has been a fantastic acclimation hike. Like there's a little bit of uphill, but it's getting you used to the altitude, but it's, it's still pretty easy and enjoyable. I want to kind of clarify, we started at the top, we took the bus at the top and we're walking downhill. It'd be a lot different of an experience if we started downhill and worked our way up. Yeah, but we still went uphill. Like five minutes. All right, it was a bad hike. <laughs> you can feel the spray. Yeah, I think this is the actual Alberta Falls because much more populated and you can really feel that mist. That's, That's really nice. Water. Yeah. Wow, maybe not the most impressive waterfall we've ever seen, but definitely impressive. Like that's the type of thing, it puts the fear of nature in you. You look <laughs> at it, you're like, mm, I don't know about this. <laughs> you see that healthy respect of the elements. <laughs> yes. I'm guessing this is the proper glacier gorge. Must be. Stuff like this also makes me think, that I really don't know how the world works at all. Like, where is that water coming from and how come it doesn't run out? <laughs> oh my gosh. Perfect timing. Thank you. Thank you. So I got some treats for us. Okay. So first of all, seltzer. Oh, ha, ha. Well, I will take a seltzer. seltzer? Yeah. Wow. Dink. Dink. Next on the on the treats sandwich. Whoa. Whoa. What a fancy sandwich. This is a fancy sandwich. Sorry, it's a little smushed. This? Did you sandwich? do this after I fell asleep or something? I did this this morning. Oh. We got our sesame seed bun and everything. <laughs> Dude, and this is um. Mine? Such a family vacation. Kind oh of man. Yeah. Look at this family vacation sandwich right here. And then also, 
We got some grapes. Grapes. Healthy eating, healthy living. And then lastly, we got some Ooh. gummies and some uh, cakes with a little bit of turkey. Well done, well done. Here on the side. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Fall River Pass is actually closed, which puts a damper on my original plan. It's a one-way dirt road that takes you all the way up into those mountains up there. It's a lot of fun. It takes about a couple hours to do, but uh, it must be too early in the season for us to be able to make it. So we're going to try and find a parking spot at a really cool waterfall here, and then we'll have to double back and then find and go the other way to the top of the mountains. So even though the one-way road is closed, the parking lot for the Alluvial Falls is still open. So, you know, if you're limited on time and you want to see something cool, definitely worth checking this out. It's even got almost, uh, not quite paved, but um, an accessible path, I should say. Looks like the dam broke here, flooded all the way down this river. It's a lake Estes. So apparently this is an alluvial fan. It's when a steep incline of water eventually reaches out into like a really flat wide area. You just bring a bunch of pebbles and rocks and stuff and it looks like this. Woo. That does feel really good. Instant relief. So because we're not able to take the one-way dirt road, we're going to take the ridge road. And you can see the cutout in the mountain over there. It's zigzagging and switchbacking behind me. actually no guardrail right here. This is one of those things that's it's technically not that dangerous if you just take your time, but it feels pretty dangerous. I actually came to a mountain ridge top and built a road. That is something so unfathomable to my mind. <laughs> We are currently at 11,350 feet and counting. I'm guessing we'll top out 12,000. Any 14ers in, the, in our view right now? Long's Peak behind us, the one with the tabletop. Tundra Protection Zone. We're right there below the road. There's a couple standing over there, but many of them are lying down. Or some of them are standing up to the left. Yeah, some moving around. Oh, I see them moving. Yeah. 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 Man, this is pretty fun to drive up to a viewpoint like this. Don't really have to work for it. You can just enjoy it. Go 
It makes me want to go to Mongolia and drink fermented horse milk and wrestle and eat offal. <laughs> Is that how you say offal? I think it's awful. I don't awful. know. <laughs> See the road down there that was the one we were going to originally come up but it's closed are you cold it is a little colder now <laughs> i've got like the full paraphernalia on and i'm freezing <laughs> okay 12,080 feet elevation right now I don't I, think are we going up there not that high but we're going to be a little higher than this i think all right last stop visitor center isn't that like the opposite of what is normal. <laughs> yeah, for us at least. I like these family vacation style things. Back home sooner, or do we want to take the scene like a scenic way? I'd say let's go straight home. If we go straight home, <coughs> uh, we're gonna go back the same way we just came. So it's either backtrack or keep going. Yeah, and take seventy back. I'm down with keep going. Yeah. All right, good to see you, Rocky Mountain National Park. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you at the post hike meal. <laughs> <laughs> the post drive meal. <laughs>